Good evening, chaps. How the devil are you? It's Friday. The beer is cold. The beer is poured. The sun is shining. Welcome to the weekend. Oh, dear me, that's good. Uh, for those who are interested in such matters, this evening's um, stream of consciousness is brought to you by Heineken. Um, let's get matters out of the way quickly. Just uh, go and uh, have a look in the chat, see who was first in and uh, so on and so forth. Um, as always, you seem to have been quite talkative while you were waiting for me. I see uh, we had Edwin Toonan in first, and he says I was I'm first this week since I didn't attend last week. Uh, what's, that, what's that you put after that, Edwin? Um, congratulations with this major achievement. We need to toast one, two, three, four, five, six beers and, and yell flake after each one. We shall see. Um as I say, I'm on the Heineken tonight, and it's not quite as lively. Uh, so we shall see. I'm sure there'll be plenty of opportunities for you to yell the word flake at me. Who else we got in? Bass at night, and Vincent Doyle is in. Uh, <coughs> and uh, then we've got Johnny H. And Grandpa Joe, Danny Hancock, Ian Clark, Luke's in as well. So is Dave Lewis. Uh, and who else we got? Uh, Peter Collins, Phil Phil, Frank Bolham is in, and uh, David Evans, Jimmy James, uh, Deco Dude, James Hunt is there, Anthony McManus, 60s Man, Chris Otterwell, and scrolling, scrolling, scrolling down, 60s Man, uh, Ian Clark, have I said you already? Apologies if I... Oh, my old mucker, Jem Jarvis, is in. We were talking earlier on today, weren't we, mate? Um, practice your G chord. <laughs> Jem's having lessons off me. Um, and where are we? We've got John Ross and Johnny Random. Nice to see you, mate. Lawrence Hastings, uh, God O'Canuck, uh, The Time Prophet, Michael Dodds, and scrolling down, also got Cal B, uh, Fender Bender, Patrick Becker, uh, Krista's in. How are you, Krista? Uh, Jay Jeffries, Johnny Love, William Forrest, John Channing, uh, Dudley Squat, uh, Cal B. Have I said you already? Uh, apologies if I'm mentioning you twice. Um, you don't have to shout twice. Uh, who else we got uh, scrolling down? Essentially, all of the usual suspects. John Max in, uh, as is uh, Dave Stevens, and Cylon Hybrid, is that how you pronounce that? Uh, Cape Cod Sea Dog, is that the uh, correct pronunciation there? And, yeah, all the usual suspects, basically. I, I, I suspect we're going to be a little bit thinner on the ground this evening, what with the uh, the Jubilee festivities. And um, can I just ask everyone, if you are of such a persuasion to do so, don't worry if you're not, but I am. So I'm just going to raise a glass and uh, offer a toast to Her Majesty the Queen. God bless her. And that was the first one gone. I doubt I'll be keeping that pace up all night. Um, yes, I've got some uh, making up to do. I've got some catching up to do, rather, because uh, you may remember that last week I was... I was stricken. I was um, absolutely full to the brim of man flu. And I was thinking, I'll have a few whiskeys and a few drinks and just kind of sweat it out. Last Friday, I finished the live stream had me curry, um, which was disappointing, by the way. Um, our local curry house, Bengal Spice, they've never let us down in the past, but it was just a bit, I don't know, just a bit disappointing and tough, and not particularly tasty last week. Um, so I uh, I was in bed by about, oh dear me, um, about 8.30 last Friday. So I've, I'm, I'm going to have... Well, not, not quite two Fridays worth of um, of uh, festivities today, but it is a bank holiday after all. Mind you, you wouldn't know it in this house because I'm working tomorrow. Um, so, excuse me while I just uh, recharge my glass. Everybody get ready with their fingers over the F, the L, the A, the K, and the E buttons. Um, 
I feel we, uh, we we probably picked up a few new viewers since um, the last time I explained this because I've had a couple of people ask me uh, the whole flake thing. What what's what's with the flake? Um, in the UK, if you get a, a, a pint of beer with a, a particularly foamy, frothy head, um, one way of, um, of of expressing your um, your, your your displeasure to the barman with, with that is to ask if you can get a flake in it because in the UK we have a thing of putting a, a flake chocolate bar in a in an ice cream. So you you're kind of pointing out that it looks like an ice cream rather than a pint of beer. Um, so if anybody's got any sort of residual confusion over the flake thing, that's what it means anyway. Cheers. Um. Uh, where are we? Uh, no. Uh, yes, I see Jim's uh, toasting the Queen as well. He uh, says, uh, here, here, good old gal. Here's the many more, many more years for her. Um, and, um, yes, I better tell you what's coming up on the channel this week. Uh, Sunday's video, I'm not going to tell you a thing about that. It is a video I don't really want to talk about. Uh, you'll know why when you watch it on Sunday. It's quite an emotional video for me. And, well, just watch the video on Sunday and you'll you'll understand everything. But there is a video on Sunday. It's a piece of music that I've written. And, well, all will become clear when you watch it on Sunday. Then on Monday... It's a solo analysis, as is usually the case. So cast your mind back to the early 80s and um, think about um, which band, which band from the 80s were the, the living embodiment, the personification, the absolute textbook definition of 80s soft rock, but in a good way, I think. You know, they the, the sort of pretty much define that genre of, you know, kind of FM radio, adult-orientated rock or album-orientated rock, um, had loads of big hits and were massive and then just, you know, were, were any, like any band that are, um, you know, kind of riding that crest of a wave, you know, suddenly fashions change and, and they were kind of terminally uncool. But I still like them. So I'm doing one of their solos on Monday. Uh, any ideas who the band might be? Um, and what's Tuesday? Tuesday, yes, it's another one of the top five ones. And it's this time it's uh, top five tips for um, aspiring and novice guitar players. I've done sort of things like this before about things that... Um, I think that's Tuesday's video. It's something like that anyway. It's a top five, which um, I, I think that is it. I, I should have written these down, but I've been um, busier than a fiddler's elbow all day, so I, I, I forgot, I confess. Then on Wednesday, it's another one of my, one of the Learn My Licks videos, and um, it's a sort of a, um, kind of an ascending and descending kind of um, slithery sort of hammer on pull off slidey kind of thing a bit different to the last one that we did uh, this one isn't quite so sort of shreddy in nature but it's a good way of uh, you know kind of scootling up or down the neck to get from one position to another very very useful so that's why that one's there uh, that's Wednesday's video then on Thursday I'm posing the question did I buy the wrong Les Paul um, you remember David, uh, my pal who loaned me the, um, the Les Paul standard with that interesting pedigree, that, um, you know, that provenance to it. Well, you may have seen, if you saw that video, um, he also loaned me another Les Paul, um, a Les Paul special, uh, that we're going to be uh, looking at on Thursday. Um, basically, um, it's the, it's the sort of, like I bought the entry level Gibson Les Paul. This is kind of another entry level Les Paul. You'll see what what I mean on uh, Thursday when you watch the video. Basically, I, I check it out and do the usual, you know, kind of put it in a mix, see what it sounds like, kind of thing, and um, and see what comes out of it. And that is what's happening on the channel this week. Um, you know, just uh, that's the rhythm I've sort of settled into. You know, as, as you know by now, Mondays are a solo analysis, Tuesdays are a top five. Wednesdays are some kind of lesson content, and Thursdays are, you know, kind of equipment or gear or 
something of that in nature. And um, then Fridays, well, you know what happens on a Friday. We have a beer, don't we? Uh, so has anybody been thinking about, um, you know, which band I'm talking about? It's not Tears for Fears. It's not Toto Mod Moody Blues, Oats and Hall. Yes. Um, no. Not Duran Duran. Not D Me. Not Kajagoogoo. No. Um, uh Oh, Dave Lewis has got it. There we go. Dave Lewis. Monday's solo analysis is courtesy of uh, Ario Speedwagon. And um, I once uh, had a bit of a, a, a laugh because I think there was, a, there was a British radio DJ called Richard Skinner. Um, I don't know if he's still around, actually, but... Um, he um, had a bit of a snide remark once that was that was quite witty. Uh, <laughs> it was a bit unkind, but it was quite witty. It was one of those um, when he was reviewing the latest um, REO Speedwagon single, and he said, uh, REO Speedwagon continue to um, remake their first ever big hit, uh, Keep On Loving You, <laughs> and succeed. Um, so, you know, that's the solo we're doing on Monday. Keep on loving you. Um, so that is uh, Time Profits. I've never heard of uh, REO Speedwagon in the 80s. God, they were, they, they were just about on every uh, episode of Top of the Pops, I seem to recall. Um Take it on the run has a great Les Paul played solo, says Kevin Hartley. It does indeed. Uh, Gary Richrath, I think, was the guitarist in um, in Ario Speedwagon. Uh, I might be wrong on that. Uh, I know it's, that's, that's, I, th I think that's that was his name. And um, yeah, I seem to recall that they, they did a, a really good turn on Live Aid. Um, you know, they were part of the Philadelphia uh, end of the operation, and you know, it's. Um, they were, they were really good live there, you know, considering, you know, um, that must be, it must have been a really kind of nerve wracking gig for a lot of bands to do because, you know, you've got no sound check. You're probably not playing through your own gear. You just literally got to turn up and play a hastily prepared set. And, you know, it, it was all kind of done on a shoestring, really, wasn't it? And, you know, the, the technology was creaking and um, that famous revolving stage at Wembley famously didn't revolve uh, properly. Um, and, you know, it was it must have been a, a bit of a nerve-wracking gig considering it was an, an, you know, a global audience. You know, things that were beyond your control could have gone wrong catastrophically and, you know, you would have... Um, not come out of it looking, you know, smelling of roses. And I hate to say it, but I think one band that um, really did um, cop the bad end of it, really, uh, were, were Led Zeppelin. You know, I, the, their set on um, on Live Aid, I thought was, well, you, you think of Queen, Queen's set as the high point. Um, nobody ever talks about Dire Straits' set at Live Aid, actually. Uh, they did a cracking turn. Um, but Queen set was was very much the high point in terms of Live Aid, but I thought uh, Led Zeppelin set was um, pretty pretty lamentable. It has to be said. Um, oh, I see uh, people are talking about uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Amber Heard or whatever. It's that is something that mercifully, because I've been, as I say, busier than a fiddler's elbow. Um, I haven't really had the chance to indulge in, um, you know, kind of going through the, um, the, the the reports of it or anything like that. I'm just not remotely, remotely interested. Words cannot express how little I am interested in, you know, the, the messy kind of mudslinging between, you know, kind of two Hollywood um, I don't know, are the A-listers or whatever, you know, it, 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 it surprises me actually how much it interests, um, you know, the, the general population, how big of a story it is. It's like, well, why is anyone interested in that? Um, oh, see, so we've got Michael Palmer in. How are you, Michael? Um, uh, let's have a, a look here. Um, 
what we've been talking about while I've been blethering on. Um, any thoughts about uh, Johnny Depp playing with Jeff Beck this week, John? Uh, not really. I, I, I sort of vaguely heard about it. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I... I think Johnny Depp did a, a bit of a cameo on an Oasis album. I think it was, it might have been the third album, Be Here Now, uh, at some point in when, whenever that came out, 97 or whenever it was. And he's, he's famously, um, you know, appeared in that. I don't know if, it's, if this has been shown internationally. I suspect it will be. Uh, that, um, that man perfume advert. Uh, where he's kind of uh, playing, I think, a Duesenberg, it looks like, in the ad. That's how much of a nerd I am when I see the advert. I'm thinking, is that a Duesenberg? Uh, playing that guitar and that. And um, so it's, I, I was aware that he played the guitar, but I didn't, I wasn't aware that he'd, um, you know, of, of how good he is because I've never really had the opportunity to, um, to, to hear him. And Graham Campbell is asking me, uh, John, do you remember where you got that scratch plate for the Pacifica you modded ages ago? I've got a P Pacifica that I'm, I'm getting around to doing up. Uh, all I did, I can't remember the exact vendor, but it was on eBay, and all I did was uh, type in Yamaha Pacifica 112 scratch plate or pick guard or whatever it was, and there was an absolute, I you know, a slew of uh, results, and you could get um, you know, kind of HSS pick guards, you could get HH pick guards, which is the one I had. Um, you could get single humbucker ones, you could get them in any finish you wanted, which you know, given me was obviously tortoiseshell. Um, so you know, eBay, just just type in you know, pick guard for Pacifica 112, and you'll find you're spoiled for choice for them. Um, Oh, Depp had a Duesenberg on stage with Jeff Beck. Um, so, fair enough. Um, uh, where are we? Let's see. Yeah, Mark's saying exactly the same thing as me, eBay. Um, oh, Cal B. Uh, do you mean, are you, yes, looking for lefties? You know, it's, I, I've said this before, and it's perhaps controversial, but... Um, I'm old enough and ugly enough that I don't really care. Um, I, I come from the, um, there's no such thing as a left-handed piano school of thought. Um, the guitar is the only instrument where, you know, people are encouraged, uh, to, to kind of play the opposite way around if, if they are left-handed. And you're painting yourself into a corner by doing that. You really are, because, you know, as, as any lefty will tell you, you've got um, such limited choice, and often it's at extra cost. Um, you know, it's... I mean, there's, there's plenty of footage of Jimi Hendrix, um, you know, signing autographs and, you know, doing everyday sort of stuff. And he appears to be right-handed in uh, everyday life, but he played left-handed. Uh, which is bizarre because, you know, well, it's not really because if you're right-handed, all of your dexterity um, and everything is in your right hand. Us right-handed people who learn to play, um, you know, the, the fretting hand is the left hand. We've got all that, those skills to relearn in that hand. Um, but if you're right-handed, um, you know, then and you play left-handed, then all of that's already there. And, you know, Gary Moore was left-handed and played a right-handed guitar. Mark Knopfler, left-handed, plays a right-handed guitar. Um, so I think it's it's just what you're conditioned to do when, when you start playing the guitar. Oh, you're left-handed. Okay, so you're going to need a left-handed guitar. Um, occasionally, I get uh, people coming to me for lessons who are... You know, they haven't got a guitar yet because I do the first lesson free. Just saying, if you're thinking, I do the first lesson free, and you know, then you know, the show people you know a couple of chords, and and then they go away and they might order a guitar. And a couple of times, um, I've had left-handed people, and you know, people who are left-handed, and they play, and I give them a right-handed guitar in the lesson because they haven't got their own guitar yet, and they get on fine. You know, it's just it's just what you get used to from the outset. Um, 
So, yeah, no such thing as a left-handed piano. If you're left-handed and you're thinking about learning to play the guitar, just just go the conventional way. You'll have much more choice. You'll pay um, less money for your guitars. And, uh, you, as I say, you're not painting yourself into that corner. Um, uh Yes, a drummer can set up a kit for uh, left-handed IEI hat on the right and Tom's right to left. Indeed, they can, but you don't. I don't think there's any such thing as a left-handed drum kit. Um, you know, and um, maybe there is. Maybe it's like a left-handed screwdriver. Anybody ever get sent for one of those on your first day at work when you when when you knew there? Yeah, go, go and get the left-handed screwdriver. Or a, a good one is uh, if you're working on a building site. Um, you know, <laughs> you often get sent for a bucket of grinding sparks. Um, <clears throat> uh, what's that? Uh, my daughter Lefty could not learn right handed. It was a nightmare. Okay, well, I, I, I can't comment on individual cases, um, but... All I can say is that um, on the few occasions when I've had, as I said, it's been a few occasions, left-handed people here in this room, starting from scratch, they've got on okay with a right-handed guitar. Um, so there you go. Uh, let's have a look. Um, what else have we been talking about? Uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, my mate, my mate asked me for a left-handed bowling ball once. I won't fall for that one again. Yes, um, <laughs> it's up there with the tin of tartan paint, isn't it? Yes. Um, uh, oh, sky hooks. That's another one. Yes. Uh, if you work for a scaffolding firm, you get sent to the stores for the sky hooks. Um, <laughs> uh, being sent for a long stand. Yes. Uh, stripy paint. We're getting them all coming out now, aren't we? Um, so, has anybody um, got, you know, given the festive, anybody in the UK talking about the festivities, the, the, the Jubilee and everything? Um, has anybody uh, seen much evidence of street parties and stuff um, in their locality? I've got to say, we haven't here. We've had a... Um, it's been busy in the town, like the wife's been um, selling the, the jewellery that she makes up on the market, and it's been absolutely bouncing up there. Uh, she's come back, uh, you know, w rather well compensated. She's had a good day trading up there today. But in terms of um, street parties and stuff, I can't say I've seen anything of that nature around here, to be honest. Um <laughs> <laughs> a can of compression. Oh, some folks have had a table up in in uh, in, in in your road of the Chris. Well, fair enough. Um, no, nothing around here either. Um, I, I'm old enough to remember the Silver Jubilee, 1977. I was uh, ten years old at the time, and. Um, it was a big, big deal back then, you know. Um, and, you know, I think we even got the day off school and there was, um, you know, the, the, the whole street was closed and, you know, I just seem to remember big, long tables full of uh, jelly and ice cream for the kids and it, it all sort of degenerated into a food fight before the rain came. Uh, so um, I was sent for a fluffle valve when I was a plumber. Um, uh, Uh, yeah, what's that? Uh, Dave Lewis is saying, I blasted out the Star Spangled Banner yesterday. I don't like our national anthem. Um, I'm kind of, sort of with you on that, mate. I don't, it's, I think, um, you know, there, there was a movement, oh, years ago, uh, decades ago, in fact, um, that, uh, that people were wanting uh, the British national anthem replaced with Land of Hope and Glory which I think is a much more stirring tune. That's the one that gets me all sort of uh, ridiculously misty-eyed and patriotic, it has to be said. Um, 
Uh, oh, I've got to put you up on the screen there, Das Schaff. <laughs> it's an old one, but a good one. Woman goes into Anne Summers. Can I take the tartan one with a white top? Counter staff says, you can't have that one, love, it's me flask. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. The old ones are the good ones. Yes. It's like the woman, uh, <laughs> the, the lady goes into the butcher's shop and she says, excuse me, sir, do you keep dripping? He says, yes, madam, but I don't want to talk about it. Um, uh, <laughs> what's that, Ian? Um, we used to be getting bees knees and chicken elbows followed by air pie and windy pudding for dinner as a kid. Yes. Um, my, my old fella, uh, used to have a, a, a similar saying you, know, you come home from school starving and said dad what's for tea and he said it's said, cold sugar and shite son um, <laughs> um, there you go um, Billy Connolly wanted to replace it with a theme from the Archers yes well that, that, it has a certain charm to it doesn't it um, a million bonus points and absolutely no cash prize whatsoever for anybody you can tell me the uh, the actual name of the theme from the Archers um, uh, oh dear me, Mark, that's a, that's a bit near the knuckle. I'm not putting that one up on screen, Mark Fahey, you naughty man. Um, uh, the USA National Anthem is an old gentleman club drinking song in the UK. I didn't know that, Johnny. That's, uh, oh, there we go. Malcolm Spillett's there. Uh, first one in, Barwick Green. Yes, um, the, um, it is, it's, um, I know, I think Billy Connolly got married to, to uh, that. That was the music that uh, when, when Pamela was walking up the aisle, the music that was playing. So there you go. Um, For those of a certain age, Brian May has added the Horvis ad music to his live solo. Yes, that would be uh, the New World Symphony by Dvorak, isn't it? Um, what's everyone's view on this reverse stringing of a Les Paul bridge type setup? I've never tried it. I believe Joe Bonamassa does it. His It's his techie anyway. Funny you should mention that, mate. I have a video coming up... Um, uh, probably in the next few weeks, uh, where, cause as you know, as you know, I've got a Les Paul, um, first one in 30 years, I might've mentioned it. Um, but you know, it is something that I was completely unaware of until, um, very, very recently, like I said, the last 10, 15 years or so, which when you get to my age, that still counts as, as recently. Uh, but yeah, the whole top wrapping thing on a Les Paul, uh, tailpiece, having looked into it, I believe it's to do with the neck angle on the Les Paul. Um, it's to do with, you know, kind of whether it's got too shallow or too deep a neck angle and the top wrapping thing is to, to compensate for that. I do remember a video from probably a couple of years ago now by, uh, Robert Baker, uh, where he did it on his Les Paul and it made it absolutely unplayable. It just made the string tension ridiculously tight to the point where, you know, that there was just no way you could bend a string. Um, and, you know, it, so he kind of uh, swiftly retreated from that. But I am going to try it because it's it's um, it's something that I've um, I've never attempted before just to see what, you know, I mean, what's it going to cost me? A set of strings, um, you know, and uh, purely, purely looking at it from a monetary um, uh, kind of viewpoint, um, a set of strings is peanuts compared to, you know, what I will earn from, a video about doing such a thing. So I'm, I'm just going to do it, you know? Um, uh, so yeah, that's, um, I'm, I'm just going to see if it, if it makes any difference, if so, what difference it makes. As I say, I've heard people say it makes the guitar feel slinkier. I've heard people say it makes the guitar like Robert Baker say it makes the guitar, um, absolutely, uh, murderous to play. So I'm, I'm just going to check it out and try it. Another video that is coming up, I'm giving you spoilers here, um, is um, I shall be buying some guitar-related piece of equipment that I've never, 
ever owned. Um, well, um, two bits of guitar-related equipment that I've never, ever owned. Um, so, given that I... One of them is, given that I'm a, a bit of a Telecaster fiend, I do like a Telecaster, you might have noticed. Um, the um, the one type of Telecaster I've never owned, I've owned Fender Telecasters. I've owned pretty much... Um, I think I've owned a Tokai Telecaster at one point. Um, you know, uh, various parts caster Telecasters, one of which you can still see on the wall behind me. Um, all kinds of different Telecasters. The one type of Telecaster I've never owned is a Squire Telecaster. So I'm, uh, I'm thinking about pulling the trigger on one of those. And as they've got those uh, Squire 40th anniversary ones that are doing the rounds at the moment, I am thinking about um, pulling the trigger on one of those. So watch out for a review of that coming. And the other one is an amp. Um, yes, I've owned an amp before. Um, I've never um, owned anything other than a combo. I've played through like a head plus a cabinet plenty of times, but I've never actually owned, um, you know, the, the sort of um, the head plus cabinet. So I'm thinking about one of those little Joyo band amp series. You know, um, there's the there's the the meteor and the zombie and the Jackman and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm just I'm just waiting for the um, you know Harley Benton do that um, that vintage thirty loaded one B twelve cab. It's out of stock at the moment. So as soon as that comes back into stock, I shall be uh, ordering one of those and uh, <coughs> and one of those Joyo band amps uh, to be. <laughs> Uh, uh, to, to wing its way to me. Oh, Steve Hogerton, how are you, mate? Steve saying a tuna, thank you. Um, uh, the hog has been missing gigging on foreign lands. Hope you are well. Well, good for you, mate. Nice, nice to know you've been out doing a bit of uh, a bit of useful uh, musicianship, mate. Glad to hear that uh, you're still getting your your, your, your gigs um, coming through for you. Um, Oh, Craig, yes, I sympathise with you. I've just set up my heavy metal strat and had fun wrestling with a locking trim. I can safely say, say I still hate locking trims. I remember you getting that guitar, Craig. Um, you know, and uh, yes, I had one myself. And um, yeah, it's I think it's the Carla Spike, the Carla or Kayla. Never sure about that. Let's say Carla, because that's the way I've always heard it in my head whenever, whenever I've uh, read it. The Carla Spider. And um, it is just a, 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 the work of the horned beast, basically. Um, so, <laughs> Vincent saying, what, no plexi? I, I, I was thinking, actually, about um, sort of the mini plexi, the Marshall Origin 5C, but I've heard so many people saying that... Um, those things sound great when you use them via like a two notes captor or something. Uh, but the actual built in speaker is, is, is pretty kind of pants really. Um, and, um, you know, and, and the other thing is I'd rather just buy an, a, a, an amp that's got one valve in it rather than, you know, a multitude of them because, you know, we, we're not sure what the supply is like those are going to be. What, what are you saying there, Johnny love? Um, are the Vance and pickups as good as the more expensive Seymour Duncan's, Demasios, etc., in your opinion? Uh, in a word, yes. Um, I love the Vance and Classic 57s in my signature guitar. Um, you know, I, I bought the, the Vance and Classic 57s because at the, at the time when um, I first got them, I just wanted some old school Alnico 2. Uh, pickups to chuck into uh, my Harley Benton uh, PRS copy. I was a bit skint at the time, uh, and I didn't have a lot to spend, so I bought those and was absolutely blown away, blown away by the sound. Those classic fifty-seven PAFs, uh, the only go two ones from Vanson's. They are a fantastic vintage-sounding humbucker, and um, moreover, when you uh, split them, when you chop chop them in half to get single coil tones they are like properly properly um authentic single coil sounds that said i'm finding i don't really do that much these days 
Um, I've got a video coming up in a couple of weeks' time uh, talking about things that I'm noticing about how my tastes are changing as a, as a guitarist as I get older. And uh, one of them is that I'm just going more and more and more for humbucker sounds these days. Um, I'm just... I'm, I'm not like disliking single coils and thinking, oh, that sounds scratchy and thin and everything. I'm just, I'm just really enjoying the sound of humbucker. And like, as tell you what, we haven't done the um, the gratuitous shot of Blondie this week. So there we go. These are the uh, the Vance and Classic Fifty Sevens. They sound absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, plenty of bite on the bridge pickup, but fat as well. And the neck pickup is, um, you know, it's just that whole kind of slash woman tone, uh, Parisian walkways, that big bend. It, it'll do all of that. And as I say, when you kind of hit that little switch there, it it really does get that sort of crisp single coil sound. It doesn't um, sound like a a kind of weedy, thin, um, you know, kind of uh, humbucker chopped in half. Um, so. Um, I suspect I'd go for more thin, twangy sounds because my ears are jiggered. Um, yeah, I'm, that is a fantastic combination. Um Kevin, let me uh, put you up on screen there so people know what I'm talking about. Um, humbuckers for bridge position, single coil for neck. That, um, that uh, Yamaha Pacific of the 311 back there, when I first saw that, um, you know, um, when, they, when they first came out, I thought there's somebody in Yamaha's office as, uh, let me bring this camera down because I'm sort of slouching in my seat a bit. Well, I thought there's somebody in Yamaha's design office who's got a picture of me on his desk and thought, let's build a guitar for that fat bloke. Um, because, you know, I don't play that guitar as much as as much as much um, I really should. It's I, I am fortunate enough to be spoilt for choice, but um, I think I might do a long-term uh, uh, video on that guitar. What's it like, um, you know, kind of uh, after I've had it for a while, because it is a beautiful guitar. Uh, it's a Yamaha. I mean, they're fantastic. Somebody there was asking how much those Vansons cost. Um, uh, they cost very little. Uh, the If you go on to... Let's pick up Blondie again. Um, if you go on to eBay, which is where you, you need to go to buy Vanson pickups, I think they're available on Amazon. But, you know, the, the eBay is where you, you can reliably get them from. This entire set of pickups, Alnico 2 magnets, um, you know, great, great sound are about 35 quid for the set. Um, and, well, you've heard this guitar. You've heard the kind of tones it makes and the, the, the noises it produces many, many times in videos. So, you know, you know, I'm not, um, you know, spinning a line here. They are fantastic sounding pickups. Um, let's, uh, oh, let's, let's have a look, see what we're talking about. Um, uh, where are we, where are we? Do you find a difference between covered and uncovered humbuckers? I've never had the opportunity to properly check that out. Um, it's the only way I suspect you could properly check that out is to get a guitar that has covered humbuckers in it and take that guitar, take those pickups out of that guitar, remove the covers, put those pickups back into that guitar and, and test it again. That's the only way you can ever kind of say, well, I've eliminated all of the other variables. Um, Personally, I can't say I have noticed any difference uh, from what I've tried. Going back to those Vanson pickups, um, when Dan was building that guitar for me, he said, what pickups do you want? Um, I, I said, yeah, Vanson Classic 57s, because I had them in the in that PRS uh, copy. They were the covered ones in that guitar, 
and they're the uncovered ones in that in 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 my signature guitar. Um, so I have had the same brand and, and model of pickups, both covered and uncovered, and. I can't say that there was a, a striking difference, but even if there was, was that down to the fact that, that, that both guitars are constructed differently, bolt on versus set neck, you know, different scale length and so on? I, I don't know, is the short answer. Um, I suspect it's one of those things that there might be a minute difference that someone once noticed. And because that's someone who once noticed it was high profile and made, you know, and, and, and said that they thought it was better this way than that way that it became sort of part of the folklore, which is now quoted as, you know, um, as gospel by people who've never really kind of, you know, done an A-B test. Um, Rick Beato and Tim Pierce, a recent Rick Beato and Tim Pierce vid, why they, where they talk about how they, uh, how they got all of their tastes change. It does. The, the, your tastes do change, you know. Um, the, it's often... Um, and Spotify is is kind of enlightening me to this. Um, you know, albums that you remember, I really used to love that album 30 years ago. You know, you, you, you just kind of get that that kind of flashback, that memory of an album that you'd forgotten that, that like 30, 40 years, well, maybe 35 years ago, You really, back in the 80s, you really loved that album and you go and find it on Spotify and you, you do think, what was I thinking back then? And and equally, you know, there, there's, um, I mean, I, I spend a fair amount of my time, um, you know, when I'm in here, just kind of editing videos and, and kind of stuff. And I want background music, just something to kind of take the, to, to banish the silence. I'll often put, um, you know, classical music on. Um, I'm, I'm really quite fond of um, Chopin. Uh, just, just, I wouldn't say I'm a classical music buff by any stretch of the imagination, but, um, Chopin's Nocturnes are just, they're the perfect music just to kind of have on as, as background, but it's, it's not quite, it's probably um, a bit insulting really to call it background music because it's, it's, it's got more worth than that, but that's ten, tends to be what I use it for. Uh, whereas you know, go back to my days as a callow youth. I wouldn't have, I would have run a mile from classical music. Um, oh, time profit saying I don't do Spotify, but I have over a thousand CDs. I probably have, um, somewhere. I just never play them. I, I, I honestly don't think I have a CD player anymore. Um, it's, um, Unless there's, unless you count the CD drive or the you know the, the optical drive in in the PC in the PC, but um, no, I haven't got a PC. I haven't got a, a CD player. I certainly haven't got a a, a a turntable to play vinyl on. Um, you know, I'm 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 mystified. I have to be said by this resurgence in vinyl. Um, a lot of vinyl is. Here's my thoughts on this. A lot of vinyl is being bought. How much of it is being played? That's 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 a question for you. Um, you know, I tend to find it. It tends to be the uh, the young trendy crew who are kind of banging on about oh vinyl this vinyl that. But yeah, I bet most of them still listen to the music on their iPhones. Um, I lived through the misery of vinyl in the seventies and eighties. That that phenomenon of like uh, you know every time you listen to an album, you're wearing it out. And you know, having to you know, kind of glue a coin to the top of the um, to the top of the stylus to stop it jumping out the groove and scratching your your favourite album. No, thank you very much. Um, you know, e even back then, all I used to do was I used to uh, buy an album on vinyl and I'd record I'd record it onto a cassette, a decent you know kind of metal or chrome cassette, and then that's that would be what I would listen to, and the vinyl would never come out of its sleeve ever again. Um, and uh, then when CDs came along, whoop de doo that's fantastic, you know. Um, I get the whole point why people like the album sleeve and, you know, and, and the liner notes and everything like that. But, you know, just just use Wikipedia. <laughs> you know, just if you want to read up about, you know, if you want to read the lyrics or if you want to, um, you know, look at, um, you know, album art, just, just 
kind of have a screen in front of you and do it that way while you're watching, uh, while you listen to your, to, to your music. Um, I'm, I'm in absolutely no hurry at all to uh, recreate my, uh, to go back to the misery of, of vinyl. Um, Yeah, Jimmy's saying I rip CDs to uh, flack fl uh, free lossless audio codec. About, uh, gosh, about uh, 10, 12 years ago. Uh, before, I, it was probably longer than that because it was before I had a smartphone, which is now what, you know, music resides on. Um, I got um, an MP3 player um, that had, that supported uh, that flack format. And I'd read so much about it, uh, about you know the, the, the absolute pristine audio quality. So I thought, right, well, you know, and I, I bought it was um, I can't remember the brand, uh, but it was it was a, it was a, an MP3 player, that, you know, decent capacity, you know, a few gigabytes that could support the, the, this audio codec. And I put a few albums on, and I'll be honest with you, I could not tell the difference between uh, the, the flak audio codec and uh, just a decent high bit rate mp3 um you know when you say high bit rate i mean like kind of 320 or something like that but when i used to um do the the the, the gig at the radio station um the uh, the broadcast software which was industry standard software that you know uh, basically, the, the, the days where you have a record player, a record deck, or even a CD player in uh, a radio station are long, long gone. It's all done via MP3 now, and it's just, you know, when, when you're kind of on the radio, you're doing what I'm doing now. You're talking into a microphone, you've got a computer in front of you, and you just load the uh, the music um, via the software. Uh, the industry standard uh, broadcast software for uh, radio broadcasts um, is, I can't remember what it's called, actually, embarrassingly enough. Um, but that, back, back 2013, 2014, that was all on 128K MP3s. That's what you had, that's the format that you had to have your MP3s in, uh, to, to broadcast. So that's, that's not a, a massively high bit rate, uh, which it surprised me that, um, you know, it was that low, to be honest. What you're saying there, Johnny Love. I know Spotify has its haters, but being able to look for more songs out there than add them to a playlist is what I could have only dreamt about years ago. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I, I use Spotify pretty much exclusively uh, for listening to music and I'm a musician and I've got my music on Spotify and I know that um, I get paid absolutely well not even peanuts I get paid the dust that's at the bottom of a bag of peanuts uh, every time um, anyone listens to my music so I should you know uh, be a Spotify hater but it is just so convenient and it's y y you might as well um, be angry at, at at the rain falling from the sky because it is just the way the, the music industry is nowadays. You know, I, as a consumer of music, enjoy the fact that I can listen to music for free, basically. I, I have the, the premium Spotify to get rid of the ads. Um, but, you know, um, I enjoy the fact that it, it's that convenient and that available. But yet, as a musician, I earn essentially nothing from uh, my musical output but that in in turn has had a good knock-on effect because what it's meant is that in order to um to, to earn money bands and artists they've got to get their backsides out on the road and tour and play gigs and you know get in front of people and it, i think it has weeded out those people that weren't re didn't really have that skill set you know the people who were, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you'll not really get another Milli Vanilli, will you, in the Spotify age? Because the only way, you know, the, the way that you know a band like that kind of because Sieg Sieg Sputnik, does anybody else remember that god awful band? Um, you know, nowadays you've got to go out and play live, 
And if you can't cut it, then you ain't going to earn a living as a musician. Um, unless you do what I do, which is just to sit in front of a webcam and talk rubbish. <laughs> um, but there you go. You know, I think we've carved out a little niche for myself there. Um, oh, Randy's in. How are you? Greetings from the colonies, boss. Um, um, uh, yeah, I, I use Spotify on the smart TV downstairs. We've got, I tell you what, we've got this ridiculously cheap little speaker system um, in our living room. Just a little kind of base bin, uh, woofer, and two satellite speakers. I think it was about 50 quid on, I think it's a Logitech uh, system uh, on, on Amazon. Connect that up to our smart TV, and boy, it fills the room with sound. And, you know, kind of real sort of puncher in the guts bass, but plenty of clarity as well. And that's just Spotify on that smart TV is just what I, well, it's it's how I listen to music uh, these days. Um, and if uh, if wifey's uh, watching uh, Coronation Farm or Emmerdale Street or anything like that, then, uh, you know, I just, I've got Spotify on here. I just plug the headphones in and go, go that way. Um, <laughs> thank you Le thank you lefty you're a you're a gentleman and a scholar um most people will pay me pay for me to not put my stuff on spotify yeah well <laughs> i i mean just i'm not affiliated with these i'm not kind of, i don't have any kind of um you know business relationship with them but i use distro kid um you pay 20 quid a year and uh you know just you, you keep all of your earnings and what i do is every now and again like a couple of three times a year i'll log into my distro kid dashboard and see what's in there and there'll be like 50 to 100 quid in there and it's like right i'll treat the wife to a curry tonight you know it's it's that sort of it's just a nice little kind of forget about it don't kind of um you know bank on making a living out of it um and every now and again, there's enough money for, you know, a takeaway or, a, you know, a, a special treat for, for me and the missus. And, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's, I think Steve Lukather uh, has a great uh, phrase. He calls it mailbox money. You've not had to do anything for it. It just turns up, um, you know, and all right, yes, I have had to write and record the music, but I think the last album I wrote and recorded was uh, back in 2017. I keep thinking about, um, you know, uh, doing a, a new album, but it's just finding the time. I did a, uh, as you will see on Sunday's video, I, uh, I wrote and recorded a piece of music for that video, which, you know, as I say, I don't want to talk about the video. You'll have to watch it and find out what it's all about. Um, but, you know, I, I got that put together in a day. Uh, you know, written, recorded, mixed, and a video to go with it, all done in, like, one day. So I'm thinking, because you know, back in 2016, 2017, when I was recording the last album, Handles for Forks, um, you know, I would have a tune on the go for a week, and I'd just kind of tinker with it and go, and I'd, I'd say to the missus, I'm just going up st upstairs to kind of uh, play with me tune, and 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 I'd spend two or three hours on it, and I'd get like a chorus done, or you know something like that. But I think the discipline of having to create music for the YouTube videos that I'm doing, I, me, me workflow seems to have got a lot quicker. So there might be, there might be. I might see if I can squeeze out another album just to get out of my system, really. Um, um, time profit? What's that, mate? Um, are your curries got gold leaf on them? Uh, no, um, no, they've got um, they've got like chicken and lentils and uh, onions and peppers and stuff like that and and lots and lots and lots of chilies. Um, uh, where are we? Uh, in the 80s, I got invited to a demo of a surround system. The demo was of a bike chase through the forest in, in Star Wars. Uh, was, was sold. Lucas Sound set up. Does anyone, talking about 80s and surround sound and stuff like that, does anybody ever uh, remember 
the phenomenal. Excuse me, I'm breaking these teeth in for the dog. Um, anyone else remember the uh, phenomenon of holophonic sound? Um, the Roger Waters album, Pros and Cons of Hitchhiking, was recorded in this holophonic sound. And when you listened on headphones, you did get that kind of full sort of 360 uh, experience, um, which um, I'm not sure if that's been kind of lost as the album has been remixed and remastered over the years. I shall have to check it out and see. Um, so... <sighs> yes, Michael, I think I know Sunday's video to must see. Yes, you saw that when you were here the other day, didn't you, mate? Um, uh, let's have a look, see what we've been talking about. Um, oh, there's the gold leaf curry comment again. Um, uh, anyone use Bandcamp? It's supposed to be free to sell your music. Yeah, I, I, um, released a couple of things on Bandcamp. Um, the only thing I would say about Bandcamp is it is a bit of an echo chamber. Um, it tends to be other musicians who go on there who listen, you know, and it's, it's sort of musicians playing their music to other musicians. Um, and um, it's it would be nice if it, if it reached a wider audience like Spotify does, but it, it just doesn't. Um, and... You know, I, um, you know, I, I basically, I mean, I say I pay 20 quid a year to get everything via distro kit and that's on Spotify, Apple music, iTunes, Amazon, Google play, Deezer, all of it, all of those and 20 quid a year and you keep all of your, um, earnings and they allow you to, um, you know, you, all, all, if you want to do a cover, like if you remember a couple of years ago, I did that um, that cover version of that um, wizard song uh, for, as a Christmas single. I wish it could be Christmas every day. Literally all the hoops that you have to go to to release a cover version, they take care of it. And I think it costs like, I can't remember how much, but it was really like ridiculously small amount. Um, so, you know, Bandcamp, it is free, but, you know, I, I don't think I earned anything from from Bandcamp. So I'm, I'm quite happy to pay the uh, the 20 quid a year to Spotify. And then two or three times a year, as I say, I'll go into my dashboard and there'll be like, you know, 50 to 100 quid in there uh, to, um, you know, to, to spend on beer and curry and stuff like that speaking of curries and everything i'm pretty much at the end of me uh of me beer um and i am a gentleman of uh, middle age and uh, what goes in has to come out if you see what i'm saying and there's a curry downstairs waiting for me so what i'm trying to say is i'm going to call it quits there for tonight chaps thank you once again 152 of you uh, at, uh, at the present count for turning up and watching a fat bald northern bloke talk cobblers for an hour it's been a blast and i'll keep on doing it till you're sick of me but for now time gentlemen please